All right, so in this video, we're talking about the after function in Next.js. This is a new addition. I believe it's in Next.js 15 or maybe 14 at some point, but we're covering it now. We're going to go through the API and the concept, um, how it is used and what the convention is to use it, and then we're going to jump into the code and see it in action. Um, one example would be a hypothetical logging a page view to an external system. We're going to see how this function can help you uh, prevent blocking the page when you're doing um, side effects or tasks that don't necessarily um, need to run or block the page when you're sending your response back. And at the end, I'm going to show you another example that I'm running using this function inside the Next.js middleware, which I think it's an interesting use case. So bear with me until I get to that part so you can see what I mean. So let's just start by the intro. What is the after function? Well, it allows you to schedule work to be executed after a response is finished. So when you need to run tasks or side effects that should not block the response, such as logging and analytics, you can use the after function. We're going to see this in action. So if you are logging without running it inside of the after function, it actually blocks the page. So it affects the response time and the user actually on the other end needs to wait until this other tasks that you have finish before being able to receive the page. But with the after function, you can just run it after the response is done. You can use it in server components, so inside your pages, layouts. You can use it in server actions. So when a mutation is happening, you can use it inside route handlers or your API endpoints. And you can use it in middleware, which is an interesting point because it runs... Middleware is something that runs uh, before every request in Next.js. And when you're using the after function, you're basically scheduling a task to run every time that a request is sent or uh, you're rendering a page. Now, what is a convention? Well, you're going to pass a callback function to your after function. And this callback is going to be executed after the response is finished. So... Here, the example is inside of a page. I'm getting the after from the next server, and I'm just logging. Um, should we actually see this in example before we continue? Let's do this. I've spun up a new Next.js app, what you get out of the box. And the idea is here, inside of our page, let's imagine that we want to log page views. Okay, so I'm going to have a function so let's create a lib folder let's put a utils.ts file inside of it let's export an async function called log that let's just pretend that this is uh, taking some time and then just logging it to the console all right this is where you would just call a third-party service to log your page view or send analytics for this specific page. Okay, so the idea is that we want to await this log over here. Let's just import this log from our utilities. We need to turn our function into an async function to be able to await. Okay, so let's comment this out for a second before we run this. Let's go back to our page over here. I have this open where I'm just serving this local host, running this page. Now, when you run this, the local host is taking uh, 130 milliseconds to run. And in total, if you look down here, it's 131 milliseconds for the document content loaded down here. All right. So this is how, how long it, it is taking for the response to be finished and for the page, for the user to actually see the page. Now, if I just comment this log back in, so now I want to log this page view and I'm awaiting this function, which is hypothetically taking a second to complete. So if I refresh the page now, let's actually empty cache and hard reload so we get everything. Now the local host is taking about a second and the total time is 1.11 seconds. So it delays the response, it blocks the response so the user won't see any UI until that task has finished. But instead of doing this, we can wrap this whole thing inside an after function, which is going to schedule this task to run after the response is finished. So we pass a callback 
inside of this callback, we're going to await, we're going to basically, yeah, await log, just delete this. And you can turn this callback into an async function so you can await the log function. So this time, I'm not running this log right in the middle of the component, but I'm passing it as a callback to the after. Let's go back, refresh the page. And even though I'm logging, this time 84 milliseconds and 97 milliseconds for the DOM content loaded. So we are getting a log, but we are not blocking the UI. So that's the, the main um, use case for this after function. So some stuff about this after function that's good to know. First of all, it is not a dynamic API. Dynamic APIs in XJS are request specific APIs like headers, cookies, search parameters. If you use those functions, typically it turns your page into a dynamic page. But the after function is not a dynamic API, meaning that calling it does not cause a route to become dynamic. Now, that's important because if you are using the after function inside of a static page, this after function only runs during pre-rendering or during build time. So it doesn't run every time that this page is requested because the page is a static. The after function doesn't turn it into dynamic, so this function doesn't run. So if your page is a static and you're logging page views here, this function doesn't run as you intended to do. Very good point to know if you're using this function for logging analytics on a static page. Another thing that's important is the after function will be executed even if the response didn't complete successfully. So if a uh, an error is thrown, if the not found function is called or you're redirecting from this page, the after function is still scheduled to run um, after this response, even if it's not successful. Again, it is important because you might want to handle what's happening or what you're logging or what you're sending to your analytics if the response actually was not successful. You can use cache to deduplicate the function inside of the after. So if you're worrying about hitting an API that you don't want to hit, uh, you can deduplicate it. After functions can be nested inside after functions. For example, you can have a utility function that wraps an after function, and then inside of your page component, you can wrap that utility function inside the after, which is then two after functions nested in one another. And lastly, you can use cookies and headers inside of the after function only in server actions and API endpoints or route handlers. So for example, we have a post API endpoint here. Inside of it, we're calling the after function. And I'm using the headers and cookies function, which is the request APIs, inside of this after function. So if we're sending, let's say, analytics, we want to log user action based on the session cookie and the user agent or the browser that they're coming from. So we can use this inside of our after function. But keep in mind, you cannot use cookies and headers inside of the after function inside of your page components. And the reason why is in partial pre-rendering, which is coming in Next.js 15, Next.js needs to know which part of the tree in React is using request APIs so it would treat them as dynamic and the rest would be static and partial pre-rendering if you don't know what it is there's a video on the channel uh, i'll link it in the description and also in the cart so you can watch that video it's basically dynamic and static at component level instead of the page level uh, but because nextjs needs to know what part of the tree is using the request apis and the after function actually runs after react is finished rendering so this cannot be used inside of the server components or inside of your page components, but you can use the cookies and headers function inside of your actions, server actions and route handlers if you need request a specific data in your logging, in your whatever activity it is or task you're scheduling to run with the after function. Now, before we go to the middleware example that I find very interesting, let's talk about the alternatives. Is there any alternative to, to this after function now? Uh, two things might come in mind. One is the wait until. This is a function from uh, Vercel. It's not actually Next.js specific. So in Vercel, you can have this function and you can uh, schedule a task. So it accepts a promise and queues a task to be executed during the lifecycle of a request. And that's how it is different with the after because after it accepts a callback, but 
it executes it after the response is finished. So they wait until it is still in the lifecycle of request. So it doesn't close off the request or it doesn't kill that serverless computation function until this other task that you have scheduled runs. But after is actually after that. Now, another technique that I have seen people try to use is to say, all right, if I'm awaiting this log, not inside of the after, but if I'm just um, the first way that we were doing it. So if I'm awaiting the log and this slows the process or blocks the UI, what if I just call log function but don't await it? Right? So it goes ahead and renders this. Well, there is a problem with this because specifically in serverless computations or functions, when the response is finished, when the actual page component renders the JSX and sends it to the client, it stops that um, instance, which can interfere with um, the task. So it, it will potentially interrupt the task that you're running. And if you actually test it, it, it won't work as intended. So removing a wait won't necessarily work if you are deploying your Next.js app to a platform like Vercel that uses serverless functions. Um, the serverless function environment stops computation immediately after the response is sent, so it potentially interrupts the task. It is recommended to use after for scheduling tasks that do not necessarily need to block the UI instead of these alternatives. Now with that out of the way, let's just go back to our application and I want to show you an example that I'm doing inside an app inside of our middleware. So this is an app that's using authentication using Clerk. And I'm, what I wanted to do inside of this app is I wanted to track when each of the users of this app was last online or has been last seen. And there might be other ways to do this. The way that I came up with is to run a function that records this last time visited inside of our inside of my middleware. So middleware runs on every request. So every time that they're requesting a page, the middleware runs, I'll find the user because I have authentication enabled, and I'll just log the last time that this specific user requested the page or was online to my database. But on the other end, I don't want this to block the response being sent back to the user because I'm talking to a database, I'm writing data, and I'm updating a user. So the after function is a perfect use case there. So as you can see here, you can ignore the top parts here because I'm just protecting different routes depending on whether or not the user is an admin, whether or not the route is protected. If you need um, instructions on using Clerk and the new versions with Next.js 15, I recently did a video on the Clerk version 6, which is uh, what supports Next.js 15. Link in the description and also in the cart up. You can click on it and watch that. Ignore these parts in this video, but here I'm just saying if there's a user, uh, why don't we just go ahead and patch the user with the last seen data, but I'm wrapping this whole thing inside an after function. So I'm saying, hey, schedule this task to run after you responded, the, the middleware finished running and you responded to the user, but I just want to record that when was this specific user online. I think it's a great use case. There might be other ways to do this. I know Clerk tracks when each user is last online because you can see it in the dashboard. You can probably alternatively call your Clerk API and get this data. But I wanted to track this manually inside of my own database. So that's the implementation that I have. So the after function, just to wrap, you can schedule tasks for it to run later. It, you can run it in your page components, layouts, or templates for page views, which would be more proper because templates run or rerun on uh, navigations. Uh, if you don't know the difference between pages, between templates and layouts, again, there's a video on the channel, um, link in the description and also in the cart. Um, templates would be a better place if you want to run page view analytics because if you put this function inside of a layout, it only runs once because layouts are only rendered once. Um, this is how Next.js is making your app more performant by avoiding um, shared layouts to re-render on every navigation. 
you can run it inside of your server actions, API endpoints, and the middleware. If you have any questions, like always, hit me down in the comments. And if you have any use case for the after function other than the stuff that I shared, let me know down in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.